Hello, how are you? We are happy to, to stay here in the third day of COS 2021. It's a very pleasure for me to present to you, to Christy Progri, uh, which is uh, really is a leader at Genome Foundation. I, I meet uh, to Christy Progri organi organizing the, the try to, to, cre to create WADEC 2021 here in Zacatecas two, two years ago. So, uh, and is the it's a really it's a really great leader. Uh, Christy is from is from Albania, and uh, is very important to the strategies from Genome Foundation to engagement to to attract the talent to to develop projects to Genome Foundation, and Genome Foundation for everybody we 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 know Genome Foundation is maybe the of the most important uh, leaders uh, around the world. In, into a strange to develop and to create new solutions around the open source software. And uh, I am probably two member of Genome Foundation from, I don't know, how, how, how months ago, Christy? Four months ago, maybe? I think it's your mute, your, your mute, Christy. Yes, something okay, like thank that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Something <laughs> like that. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Christy, please go ahead. The scenario is yours. Uh, and welcome. For, thank you for staying here with, with us and welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, the organizing team, for the introduction. And thank you, Manuel, for your very kind words. Um, so, you already know I'm Christy. I'm the program coordinator for the GNOME Foundation. And I've been contributing and I've been in the open source world for like such a long time now, probably seven to eight year. Probably I have others here in the audience that has been more years, far more years than me, but seven and eight years sometimes feel a lot. And on my free time when I'm not doing free software and when I'm not doing open source, I love powerlifting. Um, I usually train like four times per week. And this is like, a place where I feel super well and when I'm stress-free. So this is one of my uh, biggest hobby and that I like to spend some time on. I'm from Albania. It's a very small country in Europe. It's close to Greece and Italy. Pro probably this is like the best way for you to get where Albania is. Um, and we have the highest number of the bunkers in the world. And the reason that we are full of bunkers over here is because we have been under the communist system for like 50 years and our former dictator thought that in case that any superpower would conquer us or, or you know declare war to Albania, we would have these small bunkers to hide. So this is the reason that we have plenty of them and the majority of them currently in the capital in Tirana, but in also in whole Albania, they are now like small museums where people can go and they can visit um, like the history and they can know more about what Albania has been through during the five decades ago. And we're also known for the beautiful sea coast. I'm pretty sure that those that are living in Mexico or in any other countries in the Latin America, probably they do not miss sea a lot, but you know, just in case that you will be around Europe during the summer, Albania would be a nice place to stop and um, and to enjoy the, the seaside. So going to the free software world, I mentioned to you briefly about some of my experiences in the free software. I've been the chairwoman of a hackerspace, of a local hackerspace in Albania for like five years. I'm a Mozilla rep and a Mozilla mentor as well. And I've been contributing in Mozilla for plenty like for a long time, maybe like five years. And I've been the organizer of many free software conferences, uh, such as Open Source Conference Albania, OSCAL, that um, it's the biggest, actually the biggest open source conference that happens in my country and one of the biggest actually in the Balkans area. I'm currently also working with a chaos team that's only dedicated to the diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I, I really do care a lot about having a very diverse community because I really believe that the more diverse the community is, the more healthier it is, and the more feedback we get, 
more knowledge we get. So this is how we grow as well. Um, so many people, when I first talk to them about GNOME, they're very confused. What can I do? How I can contribute? And actually in GNOME, we have many areas that you can contribute and that you can feel free to join. We have the coding part, the documentation, the translation, and the engagement with a community such as the social media and the blog post. So for the coding, actually the word speak for itself. It's basically only the technical, just the technical part of the software where you can contribute in the coding, you can contribute on maintaining uh, some of our infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. And for the documentation, it's, so the documentation is a very important part of the software. So we all know how to use something. We all know the history of, of a specific software. So we have a dedicating, team only for that. The localization and the translation is also very important. So in case you're coming from social sciences, you can do some translation or you can also do some social media event organizing, writing the content and the blog post. In case that you'd like to first get in touch and in case that you'd like to first start with the coding, we have some, uh, we have some ways that you can uh, try and reach us. We are very ac active on Matrix. Uh, we have our discourse forum, our GitLab instance for problem tr tracking system. We are using the mailing lists. Actually, right now we are not into the mailing list much because this has been uh, mostly replaced by the discourse, but it's a place where you can easily find us. And for the discourse as well, it's a very active um, instance. It's a very active part of the community that you can actually basically ask everything that's um, community related. And talking more for the engagement team, engagement team works more specifically to promote GNOME by coordinating the communication with users, developers, contributors, partners and everyone else that, may, that might be interested in the project. So what we have thought for the engagement team is more of like a bridge between the foundation and the community. So all the messages that we want to, to get, like that we want to spread to the world, all our newest initiatives, our events, every cool thing that we do in GNOME, we think and we have tried to coordinate it with an engagement team that will make possible all this transition of the information from in, within the uh, foundation to the outside world. And we have decided to break down the engagement team in few groups. One is the social media team. The other is the events and the conferences, where it's basically the team that helps us to organize all our events that I will talk briefly a little bit later. It's the fundraising team, the onboarding initiative, and the graphic design. So for the social media team, it's actually the team that's only responsible for the social media content. Basically, it's a group of people that schedule the posts for Twitter, for the Facebook, for the LinkedIn. And everyone that's part of the social media team, they gather together, they try to coordinate what are the posts that they're going to post during the, during the week, the retweets. So it's, um, it's a very dedicated team and they have a lot of coordination between each other. In case that you'd like to learn more about this specific team, you can contact Caroline or uh, Tib, or you can basically uh, go on our GitLab instance and you can feel free to write an issue or to compile an issue and we'll be able um, to answer you there. The other um, event, the other team that we have is the events and the conferences. This is the, the coordinator, it's me in this group. Uh, basically, we have three main conferences that we organize during, the, during one year, it's Guarec which is our biggest conference. It's the biggest GNOME conference. We have GNOME Asia. It's a conference dedicated only in, GNOME, only in Asia. 
and everything that happens in that region. And Linux App Summit, that's a conference that's in the collaboration between GNOME and KDE. And this is one of the conferences that people really, really love. And we try to get all together at one place and meet our fellows from the KDE community as well. So basically in this team, we need people to come and to help us coordinate and to organize all the events and the conferences. Here is a photo when um, the in-person events were actually possible. This is before the uh, pandemic. In this uh, Guada, we were in Greece, in Thessaloniki. And uh, yeah, this year it happened online, last year as well, on July. And hopefully, if everything goes well, uh, we'll be able to fly. So all the GNOME team, all our members will fly to Zacatecas and to organize Guadec 2022nd in uh, Zacatecas. We love to socialize. We are a very friendly team. And in case that you'd like to participate and to join us, I'm pretty, pretty sure that you will feel so, so welcome in our community. This is as well another picture when we had the beer event in Greece. And here comes the event that I mentioned to you, the Linux Hub Summit this year. It usually happens during the springtime. So this year it happened on May and we are planning for the 2022nd to happen again, probably April, May, something around that. And um, we have opened the call for locations. So in case that you would like to see us in your coming in your country and organizing the event, in your country, please let us know or let me know, write to me, and we would be super happy um, to come and to organize an event where you are. Why not? This is a picture when it happened on uh, 2019. We were in Barcelona in Spain over here. It was a very nice event and it went pretty well. Uh, we have Gnome Asia in last year in person. It happened in Indonesia. This year, it will be by the end of November. The call for proposals are open in case that I have someone here that would, lo that would love to talk to Gnome Asia. Please do join us and write a call for papers. We'd love to have you there. Um, these two years, so in the next Gnome Asia that will happen in person, it will be organized in Malaysia. And we'll hopefully we'll be able to uh, fly there soon. So this is the event and the conferences part, which is so fun. I want to emphasize here that the organizing teams um, actually fly to the places that uh, that we are. And if you are a GNOME member, uh, you can also have your travel sponsored by the GNOME Foundation, the accommodation sponsored by the GNOME Foundation. So this is a very good, I think, motivation to also start contributing in um, in such teams. We have the fundraising team. It's one of the most interesting ones, actually. You know, money is important in the free software world. Um, well, a quote says that money spins the world around and sometimes it does <laughs> in the majority of the times. So we have a team dedicated only to, um, uh, to the fundraising. And unfortunately, recently, this not ha this hasn't been very active. But in case that um, you're interested and you'd like to join us, uh, we can definitely have a call and get um, something arranged. We have uh, contributors that are currently working on it. So we definitely would love to have you as well. Um, what does the fundraising team do? It organizes the sponsorship, the conference sponsorship, plan the fundraising, the fall and spring fundraisers and write the collaborating with foundation staff and with the foundation of the fundraising materials. And in case that you'd like to support GNOME, this is a way that you can do it. You can support it on the individual level or as an organization, if you are currently working in a big organization that you think that would be interested to support GNOME, here are some information that, that can make it possible. And 
The other initiative is the onboarding initiative. It's actually a project about working to be to build a manageable system to onboard new members into the GNOME project. So when we first started this initiative, we wanted to make this something as metric as possible and as attractive as possible to the new contributors. So let's say we want to make a very easy onboarding process for everyone that is super, super new to GNOME by creating some measurable goals and matrix and making it more welcoming and more attractive. Sometimes we are aware that when people start to contribute in a community that's very technical, maybe most of the contributors are, do not feel very um, welcome or probably they think that they have lack of knowledge and maybe like they have the imposter syndrome that probably, hey, I do not belong here. Probably I don't know as much as possible as as everyone does. So maybe we, uh, so the onboarding system or the onboarding team was actually to welcome and to help all these people come to us and say that we welcome you. I would love to have you in our team. And, uh, we have graphic design. I'm. I basically. I know many graphic designers that are from uh, Latin America. That they have done a great, a great, great job on our community. They have helped us a lot with the event assets, with the banner, banners, posters, swag for the GNOME shop, design support for our engagement projects, website and web pages design, and. We have a staff member that's also a graphic designer, is our brand manager, Caroline. And uh, for many events, we have contributors, we have volunteers that come and help us and they do a fantastic job. So if I have designers in the audience and if you have some free time, we would love to have you in our team. And I think that this is the last one, but not at least. Uh, is the GNOME University Outreach Program. It's actually a brand new project. We are trying to go to all the universities around the world and to present GNOME. Uh, basically, it works like this. You can apply to become a GNOME ambassador on our wiki pages. As you can see, you can check all the information and we will be able to provide you to set up you in our infrastructure, to send you swag, you can also apply for some funds and we can buy the things for you and you can do these organizations in our university and we can start to get as many people as possible. So if you are a student and you'd like to do a presentation for GNOME, we have amazing speakers in our community that would love to come and virtually present in your uh, university. We have also Spanish speaking um, speakers that probably will be easier for the audience to understand. And we also provide you with uh, all the swag, t-shirts, stickers, and everything else like this. Currently, um, we are doing the university in initiative in Africa. It will start probably in the next two weeks in Nigeria, Kenya, and in few other places in Africa. And we will start from there. Uh, we have done some uh, university outreach programs before as well. One, it was in, in Uruguay from one of our contributors. We've had university outreach initiatives in India and in a few other uh, places in Europe as well. Um, if you'd like to follow us or to contact us, we are on Rocket Chat. Probably the link, it's not very welcoming. I know that it's very long and it's, you know, unfortunately it's not clickable, but probably the easiest way to contact it's by writing me. It's on the on the last slide. I have added my email address and from for everything that I've said till now, I'd be super, super happy to, um, to reply to you or to answer you or to get contacted by you. So this was from my side. Now I'm leaving Manuel to speak about the last slide. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Amazing information. 
I hope mm. I hope a lot of people around the coast is, we are interested in the programs for you know 